At the last video in chapter 28, I'm going to show you how to create area under the curve, a summary measurement. So this is a gross curve profile for each individual subject in this study. And I, I'm showing you data on first five uh, girls and first five boys. So this first girls, let's uh, look at area under the curve under this growth curve so uh, this is an uh, area okay so we compute this area for each girl so for id number three and area would be here okay so that means a subject with greater gross measurement and of course they have greater area under the curve okay so we will compute this area under the curve for each patient and the area under the curve is very popularly used method when you have drug kinetics data so for example this is a graph uh, we measure we would have a uh, level of drug and every single minute if we can measure okay so drug level change over time like this y-axis is a level of drug x-axis is the time okay but difficulty we have is because we don't measure uh, drug level every single minute or every se single second even an observed time point could be every single hour or every uh, five hours so you this is observed data point so this patient over a three hours we measure once every hour okay and then we forgot to measure uh, after two hours so we don't have a data on uh, two hours point so in order to compute area under the curve what we had to do is instead of estimating nicely on this nonlinear curve since we don't have this nonlinear data we simply connect this dot okay and then area under the curve be area under this straight lines okay so that would be area so I wish we could have area under the curve in this nonlinear graph, but we don't have nonlinear measurement. Therefore, you know, all we have is connecting straight line. Okay, so this is the area under the curve we are going to compute. So that's this. Okay. And in order to compute area under the curve, you might think we had to compute this triangle area in this triangle and then area in this rectangle and again area in this triangle and then area in this rectangle and then you might think oh gosh and that's too much to do and don't worry there is an easy way you can do calculate this triangle and this rectangle separately and what we do is we just calculate this rectangle area you might have already realized yes this triangle area okay, this triangle area is same as this triangle area so by computing area under this rectangle and it's the same as you compute area under this uh, area under the curve for interval between 0 and 1 and the same thing for interval between 1 and 3 what we do is we take average of this two point which is average right here okay and then we compute area under this whole rectangle okay all right let me show you better graph this one okay so we're going to compare area under uh, this rectangle which is average between these two data points on y-axis in times uh, interval between 0 and 1 and to compute this rectangle area which is 
a height would be averaged between this point and that point on y-axis, that's here, in times uh, interval lengths between 1 and 3. Okay, so this is equation. So 4 plus 8 divided by 2 give an average, which is a height in this rectangle. And then uh, the bottom length would be 1 minus 0. Okay, so this gives area in this rectangle. And then this part of equation, 8, point, 8 plus 6 divided by 2 is average between this point 8 and this point 6. So that gives a height of this rectangle. And multiply that by length on bottom, which is 3 minus 1. And then uh, you get multiplied by these two, and you get the area of this rectangle. And then you simply add them up. And this gives a 20, which is area or under the area under the curve AUC, right? And um, there is no easy syntax to do in SPSS, so we basically have to do this by hand. So go to a uh, compute variable and then give some names for AUC. And uh, what we do is we compute each of these areas separately. So AUC, now I'm doing AUC2, but let's look at AUC1. AUC1 compute this first rectangle, and then AUC2 compute, right, and this second rectangle. And uh, you have more dots, uh, more data points, and you repeat this for every single rectangle, and then finally you add them up. Okay, so that's what we are going to do. So go to SPSS, and to do this, and you need to have um, you need to have this uh, horizontally entered data. And I probably go back to our very original data set, if you don't mind, and let's go to gross data, and that's this one. So each line is for each patient. And what we do is go to compute variable and then uh, put AUC1 and which is average between uh, find a, a, a function for mean and function for mean would be they're gonna be uh, here okay so that'd be mean between uh, first and second and I need a comma here, okay? And times interval between 8 and 10, so that is 10 minus 8, okay? So this create the first area, um, right? And click OK. And do this for uh, two more time in area 2. Second area would be average between gross 10 and gross 12. And then bottom length would be 12 minus 10. Okay, and that creates the second in AUC. And then do this for the last interval, which is average between gross 14 and gross 12. And length would be difference between 14 to 12. I do AUC equal AUC1 plus AUC2 plus AUC3. And click OK. And this should create, uh, yes, AUC, final AUC. And if you have a hard time uh, doing this for too many times, there is a nice way you can do it in SPSS. So if you click on Paste button, and SPSS create the syntax. Okay. So this is for AUC number three. So all you do is uh, copy and paste, right? Let's paste it one more time. And, all right. And then you change this to one, two. Okay. And then gross would be from uh, eight to ten. And then between interval of ten to eight. And the second one is gross between twelve to. 10 to 12, and interval would be between 12 to 10.
and do the same thing for the last interval uh, average between 12 and 14 and interval is 14 minus 12 okay and then you can do compute AUC equal AUC1 plus AUC2 plus AUC3 and let's execute this and see what you get so you go to run and all section run section and then go back to SPSS yes it did create uh, AUC123 and AUC just by one click so nice thing about syntax is you can save the syntax and then next time you want to repeat this analysis using different data set or updated data set you don't have to go through all the point and clicks uh, and also it will help reproducibility in your analysis okay so now we have AUC uh, so let's compare average AUC or median AUC between boy and girl and we like to do non-parametric and you could do student t-test but let's do non-parametric so you go to non-parametric and uh, you put AUC as outcome variable and let's compare between boys and girls so now uh, p-value is 0 0.077 so AUC was not statistically significantly different between boys and girls so as you see in these three videos and there are many useful uh, summary measures you can create and if you can create one summary measure per subject over many repeated observation and you no longer have repeated measures you have only single summary measure per patient so you can conduct a simple statistical test such as t-test or Mount Whitney u-test to compare groups